Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In today's video, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be discussing the aspects of love and relationships in Harry Potter. Throughout the series, we see various romances blossom. They have their highs and they have their lows. And then, all of a sudden, the story just sort of ends. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing the relationships that became solidified after the book's films ended. We see some relationships become solidified during the story, like Remus and Tonks, but others are left a little open-ended. I think that some of these are obvious, but a few of them are a little less obvious, so I'm curious to see if you know them all. Fortunately, Rowling expanded on the Harry Potter universe after the story had ended, so we can indeed confirm that these matchups are canonically consistent. Number 8. George Weasley and Angelina Johnson that's right, George Weasley of the Fred and George Weasley duo ended up marrying Angelina Johnson, later Angelina Weasley. As we know, George and Fred were the closest of brothers, and they shared a beautiful friendship where they would spend every waking moment with one another. As you can imagine, after the loss of his brother and twin, George was a bit lost. The wizarding world had ended and peace had returned, but he now faced a new struggle, life without his brother. However, as we know, life must go on and so he focused on his work, becoming quite successful. However, over time, George began to develop a relationship with a fellow Gryffindor graduate by the name of Angelina Johnson. Angelina Johnson was a witch born in 1977. She played a reasonably active role in the series, becoming a member of Dumbledore's army and also captaining the Gryffindor Quidditch team in her seventh year, which was also Harry's fifth year. George and Angelina ended up getting married and having children, but the unusual thing about their relationship is that Angelina was actually Fred's ex. I'm not sure what the rules are surrounding dating your dead twin's ex-girlfriend, but it certainly sparked some controversy with fans. To make things slightly more unusual, one of their children was called Fred, Fred II, and their daughter was named Roxanne. Number 7. Ron Weasley and Hermione Granger Moving on to another Weasley. Now, this one is certainly more obvious, and it's even included in the epilogue. However, since then, even more information has been revealed about their relationship, so I wanted to give you everything that I know. Starting right at the beginning, Ron and Hermione were butting heads. They drove each other mad, constantly hurled insults at one another, and had more than one falling out. However, they always came back to each other, and as they grew older, the mutual, unspoken attraction became more and more prevalent. What many might not realize, however, is that Ron started developing these feelings of affection as early as the second book, when he became irritated by her crush on Gilderoy Lockhart. In the fourth book, their romantic feelings really began building up, and by the time the sixth book rolled around, it was undeniable. Who were they kidding? After the war ended, Ron and Hermione got together and had two children, Rose and Hugo. Oddly enough, after the series ended, Rowling expressed that she regretted putting them together, breaking the hearts of many fans. She even remarked they would likely need some marriage counselling. Maybe Harry was the mediator they always needed to make it work. Oh, maybe she and Ron will be alright with a bit of counselling, you know. I wonder what happens at wizard marriage counselling. They'll probably be fine. He needs to work on his self-esteem issues, and she needs to work on being a little less critical. Number 6. Luna Lovegood and Rolf Scamander After the war ended, Luna Lovegood ended up becoming quite a famous young magizoologist, staying true to her love of magical creatures. For those unfamiliar with the profession, a magizoologist is a wizard or witch who studies magical creatures. One of the most notable magizoologists in Harry Potter is Newt Scamander, who wrote Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. And interestingly enough, Luna actually went on to marry Rolf Scamander, Newt's grandson. Rolf was a British wizard that worked for the Daily Prophet and became a magizoologist himself. It has been expressed that for their wedding, Luna dressed in typical eccentric Luna fashion sporting a rainbow dress and tiara with unicorn horns. Later on, sometime between the years 2008 and 2014, the pair had two sons, Lawson and Lysander. Some fans were upset by this news, as many speculated that Luna and Neville would have been a good pair. However, Rowling had different plans for Neville. Number 5. Neville Longbottom and Hannah Abbott This is an interesting one that sort of comes out of left field. Neville and Hannah are never really shown as being intimate with one another, to add to this, they were in different houses. Hannah was a half-blood witch that began studying at Hogwarts in the same year as Neville, but she ended up in Hufflepuff. We of course know that Neville was a Gryffindor. However, there are a few connections that can be made between the two 
that potentially serve as reasons for them inevitably ending up together. First of all, both of them were in Dumbledore's army, so they had that going for them. Next, they shared herbology lessons together. This was made possible because Gryffindor and Hufflepuff students shared this class in their year. Neville excelled at herbology, which probably meant that his environment led to a more charismatic, confident Neville, one that can send an arrow from Cupid's bow into the heart of a young Hannah Abbott. Furthermore, in the Battle of Hogwarts, Neville was an absolute stud, so he likely impressed many female sutresses. The pair never ended up having children, as far as we know, but we do know that they moved in together above the Leaky Cauldron, where Hannah worked as a landlady. As I mentioned above, many were upset that he didn't end up with Luna, but I guess it just wasn't meant to be. Number 4. Draco Malfoy and Astoria Greengrass That's right, even Draco Malfoy found love, in the form of Astoria Greengrass. Draco is mentioned a little bit in the epilogue, but we don't get much information, so I'm here to expand on things. While attending Hogwarts, Draco never seemed to express much interest in the opposite sex. However, many speculated that Pansy Parkinson, a fellow Slytherin, would have been a perfect pairing for young Draco. However, that never came to fruition, and instead, Draco ended up marrying Astoria Greengrass, a girl that was two years below him at Hogwarts. Unfortunately, Draco's parents didn't think particularly highly of the pairing, as per Pottermore. Draco married the younger sister of a fellow Slytherin, Astoria Greengrass, who had gone through a similar, though less violent and frightening, conversion from pure blood ideals to a more tolerant life view, was felt by Narcissa and Lucius to be something of a disappointment as a daughter-in-law. They had high hopes of a girl whose family featured on the Sacred 28, but as Astoria refused to raise their grandson Scorpius in the belief that muggles were scum, family gatherings were often fraught with tension. As mentioned above, the pair had a child, Scorpius Malfoy, who attended Hogwarts at the same time as Albus Severus Potter. In a tragic turn of events, Astoria actually ended up dying quite young, falling victim to a bloodborne family curse. This left Draco a single father. Number 3. Harry and Ginny Another obvious one, but again, there might be some things that you don't know. JK Rowling discusses Harry's relationship with Ginny further. The plan was, which I really hope I fulfilled, is that the reader, like Harry, would gradually discover Ginny as pretty much the ideal girl for Harry. She's tough, not in an unpleasant way, but she's gutsy. He needs to be with someone who can stand the demands of being with Harry Potter, because he's a scary boyfriend in a lot of ways. He's a marked man. I think she's funny, and I think that she's very warm and compassionate. These are all things that Harry requires in his ideal woman. At first it seemed like Harry and Ginny would never be able to happen. Ginny was his best friend's sister. Harry didn't know what to make of Ginny at first, but after the events of the Chamber of Secrets, he began to see her as more than just his friend's little sister, and instead her own confident young person. However, at this stage, he certainly didn't have romantic feelings for her. In 1996, however, all of that changed. Harry's relationship with Cho had recently fallen to pieces, and Harry began spending a considerable amount of time with Ginny at the burrow over the summer. In his first potions class with Slughorn, the love potion and Mortensia revealed he was attracted to something flowery he had smelled at the burrow. This smell later turned out to be the smell of Ginny's hair. Furthermore, after witnessing her kissing Dean Thomas, Harry started to feel jealousy, confirming that he did in fact have feelings for her. Shortly after this time period, the pair shared a subtle romance and even exchanged a few kisses. However, it wasn't until after the war that things really picked up. Eventually, the pair got married and had three children, Lily Luna, Albus Severus, and James Sirius. Number 2. Percy Weasley and Audrey Ah, another Weasley, eh? That's right, even Percy, the difficult Weasley, ended up finding happiness and love in the form of a witch named Audrey, whose maiden name we don't know. In fact, very little is known about the relationship of Percy and Audrey, but we do know that they had some children. Their two daughters were named Molly and Lucy. Number 1. Bellatrix Lestrange and Voldemort This is a weird one, and while their intimacy was revealed after the series ended, they technically must have gotten together during the series, and we know this because of their daughter, Delphine. She was conceived sometime in the mid to late 1990s, in secret at the Malfoy Manor, and her birth did actually coincide with the events of the original books, we just never had any indication of it. Though Bellatrix was a notorious mass murderer, she did have a soft spot for the man that she served, Lord Voldemort. This was obvious, but what's less obvious is that Voldemort shared some kind of mutual attraction. 
My own personal theory is that Bellatrix used a love potion on Voldemort, and if you want to hear more about that, check out the video link which I'll leave at the bottom of the description. Their relationship obviously falls into cursed child territory, which I know a lot of you don't appreciate, so you can take this relationship however you want. And that's it for this video. Did you learn something about love in the wizarding world? Comment down below. Until next time, remember, differences of habit and language are nothing at all. If our aims are identical and our hearts are open.